the meeting to order. Um, do we need a review of Zoom procedures, Mike? No, we should be good. Okay. All right. Um, I don't know if other commissioners have had a chance to look at the agenda, but if anyone wants to take a look and move to approve the agenda, go ahead. I move to approve that. Great. I'll second it. Great. Okay, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Great. Okay. Um, the next section is comments from the chair. I don't have any comments. Um, I do have a few questions, Mike, and I don't know if this is the place to do it, but just things that I wanted to go over in terms of upcoming public meetings and um, also the farmer's market. Um, mm -hmm. So is Evelyn planning to, or is there going to be a table at the farmer's market uh, for the next few Saturdays? And Yeah, so in, in general, yes. The, the, the plan is to have someone at the farmer's market. Um, we didn't line up a tent, which is why this weekend in the pouring rain, she opted not to go. Um, she has her own tent that she can use. Okay. But she, uh, but she decided that for this first one, she wasn't going to. But in general, she wants to try to go and have it, whether it's our stuff or rec stuff or other city stuff. But um, she was, she is going to continue to put out, even if it's just her, the, the city plan stuff while she's there. But if I can be there, I'm going to try to be there. But if other folks want to fill in for me, it is Saturday morning from nine to noon. Um, she usually sets up a table, not in the farmer's market space, but on State Street to the towards the Capitol in front of that um, that building that's there. Usually, is it is it where the police uh, meet the police set up in front of like one thirty three State? I when I was there, I the the meet the police wasn't there. But okay. that's not to say that that's not the location. Is yeah, it's right in front of that that okay. um, that building. It's it's on the same size side as the farmers market. It's just not literal. It's not in the farmers market. It's on the street next to the farmers market. Okay. Um, so it's it's a pretty easy location to find. We we had a lot of good communication when we had the first meeting there. Um, it was it seemed like a pretty good location. So, but yeah, we're going to try to keep doing it throughout the summer, right through to the fall. Um, and depending on how much um, other, uh, obviously she's going to keep bringing the different um, pieces of information on the city plan. And uh, if any of you want to show up, we'll probably just shoot out an email at the end of the week to go and see who wants to go. So that way we don't have eight of us there or none of us there. Um, yeah. We'll just I mean, figure I that out. I'd like to go this Saturday. This is probably the best weekend for me since my daughter's at sleepaway camp this week. So um, that's a good opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> um, will we also have, so we'll have the storyboards there, I assume. Will we also have like printouts of material that people can take or? We will have, um, she's been doing some printouts. Um, what she'll have is the those implementation plans, the big boards, but the storyboards that are on the website, obviously we won't have, um, but we will have the implementation boards and she'll have um, flyers that have links to the storyboards. And so a lot of it is just initiating discussions with people about what we're doing, um, what's in there, um, and people a lot of times just review and have some questions about different programs and stuff. And if you don't know, I'll, I'll have business cards there. If I don't happen to be there, people can always say, just reach out to Mike. Here's his business card. Um, okay. Most of the time, people just want to talk to you about what their concerns are, what their issues are, and how they're being addressed. So it's a good good opportunity to meet people where they are. Great. Um, and then in terms of the next two public meetings it sounds like 
the July 8th one will be on Zoom. Um, and then the July, is it 22nd, I think? Yes. Would be the second one in person. And I'm just wondering um, if we want to briefly talk about where we want to do it. I mean, I I found Wilder Arts, if Maria is willing to do it again there, like a little cheerier than the Elks Club and also a little more, you know, centrally located. Um, but I don't know if there's a reason we are compelling reason we are doing it at the Elks Club the second in-person meeting. Uh, I think it, in, in that case, a little bit of that one was because it was about the arts, it was about housing, and Country Club Road was a main site for that the housing. I was I'm just a little concerned. It depends how many people show up. And that's that's the challenging thing about Maria's site is that it was if we had we, we never know how many people are going to show up. And if we did have a crowd of 25 people that showed up, I think they would be very cramped in there and might be kind of disappointed, and especially in late July, maybe that might be a little warm. Um no, Wild Arts is air conditioned. <laughs> oh, is it? Is it air conditioned enough to keep us nice and cool? All right. Um, but that that was my concern is I I just for for the number of people we had, I thought it was a great space. I was just concerned if we had another 15 or 20 people, would people feel comfortable enough in, in that space um or not? And that's really a question of how many people are we gonna are we going to be able to to draw out for these for these meetings? Um, and if we're going to get more, we really should have a space that could accommodate more. Um, and that's I don't know. That's just for thought, food for thought. It's your it's your meeting. However, you guys want to do it, and wherever you guys want to do it, I will make it happen. I'm all for the Wilder Arts because it logistically makes sense for the greater net of people who may or may not want to drive. The Elks, I agree, was kind of out there. Um, and so it's it just makes more sense. And, you know, planning on the hypothetical that we get a number of people where I've been in this number of times, I don't see that amount of people overwhelming us. And if they do, we 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 can, you know, I'm sure be nimble for a solution. That, that's all. Okay, does, no, good. Does anyone know of other spaces downtown that we should hit up Rebel Rouser or Ed. I mean, at this point, the like take the paper. We could take the paper down or keep the paper up. They're only discussing the vendor stuff that's in there, so the place is just sitting there. Do you have any contacts there that we could ask? I, I can. I can. Uh, sure. I'll, I'll. I'll reach out to uh, to the person who owns the building and see whether or not. I mean, it's Ed Kaplan. Everybody knows him, you know, but it. But I don't know if everybody has a relationship. So I'll, yeah, I'll just. Okay. Be, I'll just see um, if he's willing to uh, do something with it in transition of whatever they're doing there. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess I don't know what the Wi-Fi situation would be with Ravel Rouser, if that would be tricky or not. But yeah. I mean, if um, we have hot spots, everybody has hot spots at this point in the world, and so okay. that can be an <laughs> issue. Okay, yeah, it's a little easier in the downtown. It was tough to find a hot spot out at. Uh, out of Country Club Road, but that's just kind of an odd, odd site where it sits. It just doesn't connect well with the cell towers. But downtown, I would hope, would be pretty good. And I don't know how if we're, I don't know if we're close enough to catch the one from City Hall because it's right across the street, so it might catch that one. But is Wilder at this point is Wilder not an option? Because if it's, I mean, is it or is it not? Or um, because if it's the importance is is being located in downtown. Why not we ask, you know, the library if we can rent out the Hayes building because they can rent it out for two hours and or the Hayes room. And then that way we can alleviate it. Just contingency plans and build A to Z options. Do we know if the library is currently ADA accessible? Uh, I, I, I think, think the elevators now. The I'm, not, elevator. I'm not sure about that, but I mean, at this point, like if 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 it. I guess I got to ask this question. Does it have to be ADA accessible if no one that is re that requires um, that ability to be there shows up? Does it has to be baked in initially 
uh, because usually, yeah, usually that's what you want to do because you, you don't want to be able, you don't want to be in a position of excluding somebody because somebody who does have a disability uh, shows up. You want to have an accessible site if, if possible. Now, post flood for the first couple of weeks and months, we were really in a pinch for finding accessible locations. That's all good. But, let's keep the conversation yeah. moving as far as it would like, okay, but, but let's find some place that has is ADA accessible and all that. If the library is not it, let's go somewhere else. But we don't have to drill in on it at this point. That's that's really like low. That's not a priority. Uh, we can, I mean, we can find that. But if Wilder is not available or wild, like we should just, if it's Wilder, let's do Wilder. But let's not bake in if we get 50 people Wilder's not going to be an option before we even use Wilder because Wilder was an option before and 50 people didn't show up. I, and I also, was... also I, I just want to point out to you on the website, it says June 26, Monday, June 26 on the website that you gave us. And June 26 is not a Monday. For, for June yeah, my my agenda says June twenty fourth, but maybe that got posted wrong by Audra. So yeah, I'd have to see where that. I'll I'll check the website and see if that got put in the wrong spot. I it's, looked at the paper it's version. It's not that it got put online. in the wrong spot. I actually let me let me send you. I'll send you uh, the page. Um, it's not that it it got in the wrong spot. It's there. But this meeting today, are you guys still there? Yeah. This meeting today yeah. states that it's going to be on Wednesday. Um, and so, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's a part of the whole, like, environment of communication um, that we could be doing a better job at. Um, no, by by all means, let, let me know. Show it to me, and I'll, I'll figure out where the – Is there a way I can share it up. to the group now? Can I share the screen? Yeah, or if you want to. Screen, not share the screen. I just want to – show the screenshot it's not that hard i mean we can go, go to the website if you go to our go to the the uh the domain that you sent us um as far as the the last uh you know going to the website going to our let's see here i'll send it this way i mean i don't i don't think the whole you know if mike needs to fix something on the website i think yeah i'm just saying so you know, send this it to adds, him, i don't think we need here. to see it i'll see it I'm simply saying these people should be here, um, and it starts with like communication. And it was a meeting for today, and it says it's Monday the twenty sixth. And... Uh, Carlton, I see what you're. I see what you're looking at. Yeah, it's, thank you. It's on the. If you go to the city plan page, and there's a little thing that says summary updated today, next commission meeting Monday June twenty sixth. Yeah, um, somebody yeah just fat fingered it. Is what it's yeah, but, so we can. I mean, I, yep. I it's think, not about being fixed. It's just about being aware that people may not attend things because the information is not being put on the public site correctly. That's my point. We can yep. move on now. Okay. okay. I will follow um, up with everyone on that one. Thank I, you. I just want to go back to Maria. Yeah. <laughs> about to speak. <laughs> um, so, one, I don't know that we could have it at Wilder Arts on, oh, is it July 26th? Is it the 22nd? I want to say it's the 22nd. 22nd. It's a Monday. Um, we have a summer camp going on in there where they're building like a pop-up comics cart. And so okay. the space is going to be occupied by a comics cart. But I was going to say, um, Katie Trout is very interested in having um, people attend the public meeting, the next public meeting. And I was wondering, maybe we can just consult with her and see if she can use her downtown business contacts to find somewhere that might be ADA accessible, large enough, um, another like fun spot, I think. What about the senior center? Is that? Yeah, the, the senior center was going to be where I was going to suggest. That's always one that, that can work out. It's ADA accessible. It's in the downtown. Most people know where it is when you say the meetings at the senior center. Most people already know where that is, so. It's a pretty safe space. Okay, that sounds great. So we'll look at the senior center or Mike, you'll follow up with Katie about a potential yes. downtown. Okay, great. Um, 
And just the last little thing I just wanted to make sure. Um, are, are These meetings are being posted on Front Porch Forum, right? I mean, which... This one isn't because this one's just a regular planning commission oh, not meeting. Not this for you one, guys but I mean the, the public input meetings. Is yeah, that Evelyn. Uh, Evelyn was holding off on posting uh, on doing her media blast because we were trying to get the the storyboard cleaned up and put on, and we've got this technical issue that last time we said, "Hey, can you fix it?" They fixed it in like two hours. This time we said fix it and it's been a week and a half and we haven't gotten it fixed yet. So we're still trying to get the storyboard just to turn off a box. And, it's, and it doesn't really matter. We can put it on, but you, as you scroll down, it asks you to sign into ArcGIS. And we don't want to have anything that's going to start confusing people and people think, well, now I got to sign into this. I can't do this. All you got to do is hit cancel and you can keep going. <laughs> but we just want to get that box off of there. And we know it can happen because we did it for the first three storyboards. We just have to get it turned off for the next three storyboards. So when we reached the point that it was getting into last week and you, um, Ariane and Maria, decided to just not do public input for this week, she's got things queued up and she's already pushed out a few things about the July meeting for the public input. So we're starting that push and she's going to have a more aggressive push on those going forward. Um, to let people know about the July 8th and the July 22nd. Okay, great. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I'm not a, a public PR person, but it, at a minimum, we want to have it on the city's website, Facebook page, front porch forum, send it to all the committees. Um, and then if other folks have other ideas uh, for where we could post it. Um, feel free to let Mike and Evelyn know. Um, we'll try to get a more, even though it's July, which is tough, um, mm -hmm. perhaps we can get a more robust turnout for some of the next meetings. And I think, yeah, having Katie help will be also um, great for Montpelier Live. Okay, so that was, that's the chair section. Um, so we have general business comments from the public. Let's see, we have Peter Kelman here. What would you like to share with us, Peter? Um, well, just three points. Uh, public input sessions that are barely attended by members of the public have very little value and no validity whatsoever. By validity, I mean one can't at the end of the day say, oh, the public had an opportunity to have input. The process to date has obviously not drawn very many people, and I haven't heard anything that would suggest that it's going to draw many people going forward. Um, although, Ariane, the, the points you just made are good, except that communication, as uh, Carlton um, just observed, is not just a matter of doing it, but doing it accurately. And Evelyn is only one person. I'm not even sure she's full-time. She's certainly not full-time on this project. She has many other things to do. And um, there have been, uh, right along throughout this whole process, there have been errors, omissions, inconsistencies, um, stuff that can't be seen, even though that you're sent there to see it. Um, I, I, I think it's, it's kind of troubling to think that this is our public input process. Secondly, the online versions, as Mike just uh, said, continue to be a problem. Um, if you are dependent on a, if you're on a proprietary platform and you're dependent on an, uh, uh, a vendor to do things, because again, Evelyn is only one person and she doesn't really have the technical expertise to do it. I think it is a big mistake to be doing this exclusively online. Mike says, oh, of course the storyboards won't be at, uh, at the table. Right, of course, they won't be at the table. That's why I said, I'll say again, I think that the content of the chapters needs to be in a PDF form where people can pick it up. They be, do not have to go to a storyboard. Donna uh, uh, spoke very persuasively. Some people just can't look at a screen like that. It makes them nervous or nauseous or whatever. I happen to uh, uh, have pretty much experience with people who have that kind of difficulty. 
um, I, I really think you need to reconsider um, being so dependent on, on, on an online presence. I know it's supposed to draw people in, but I don't think it actually does. And third, there are so many problems with the content of the chapters. It is filled with errors, omissions, inconsistencies, and worse, it is not addressing the Montpelier of today, let alone the Montpelier of the rest of the decade and into the, into the 2030s. Uh, how many people who are on the uh, planning commission today have been present during the building since 2018? This is Mike's plan. Mike is the only one who has been consistently working on this. Now, Kirby got quite involved and wrote some very good prose chapters, rewrites of the, of the original. They're gone because they've been taken over by the, this online version, which doesn't really uh, explain things as well, I think, as what I read, at least in the housing chapter that Kirby did. Kirby, Mike, and me, are the only people who have really been involved in this pretty much since 2018. I don't think, how many of you have had a chance to really dig in and look at this, let alone the public? And the public doesn't re, hasn't really had great access to it for all the reasons that Mike and Carlton uh, and Ariane implicitly ju just made the comment of. I think this, we really, I would urge you to be honest and step back and say, what is realistic and how is this plan going to be used or misused? My concern is the misuse of the plan. I know from going to, going to DRB meetings, from going to planning commission meetings and so forth, city council meetings, people use this plan to promote their own views. They say, oh, this is inconsistent with the city plan. They, they weaponize it. They weaponize the, the, the city plan. So. If you're going to create a plan, it needs to be accurate, it needs to be relevant, and it needs to be a plan that makes very clear that these are guidelines or whatever it is saying, this is not the holy writ. You cannot, and by the way, the people who use it are not just uh, NIMBYs, they're also people in city government. I've heard Bill Fraser say, Half a dozen times, I heard Kevin Casey say half a dozen times, this is consistent or this is inconsistent with the, with our, you know, well, it wasn't called the city plan then, with the master plan. Baloney. If this is the process that we're building this thing on, you cannot be citing this as holy writ. This is a flawed document. It will be a flawed document. It needs to be a dynamic document, one that can change easily one that can adapt to floods, one that can adapt to uh, um, uh, the tornadoes, one that can adapt to fires like at RK Miles. We're not just talking about flooding. This is not the only resiliency we need. We need overall resiliency to climate change or to unforeseen things like the pandemic. And right now this is being written like it's, it's looking backwards. Look at all the, the, the strategies. They are almost all continuations of things we've been doing. What about the future? Thank you. Here, 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 here. Okay, well, thank you, Peter. Um, we have heard your comments and I, made notes um you know i do think we are working to incorporate some of your comments such as you know we talked to mike about having a copy editor for the for the um plan um i do you know i do think it's it would be good mike to have some printouts in some way and we can we can talk more about that but i do agree that for some people going online may not be um easy to, you know, digest the information. Um, but I do think, you know, one of the reasons we want it online is that I think that's, that makes it easier to respond to updating the plan. And we have talked about, um, you know, kind of revisiting the plan once a year and, and making updates. But to me, that's, that's a good reason to have it on the web. Um, 
because I think that's that's easier to update. Um, but I don't want to get into a you know a long long uh, back and forth. But I want you to know that we did hear you, and we are working to incorporate comments and and uh, you know. <clears throat> We'll continue to try to improve. You know, I know that the process has been imperfect, but um, we're doing the best that we can. I would say. I don't know if any other commissioners have. I I def I agree with you, sir. I, I I feel like I'm I'm in the I don't know where the tail end or the beginning of or what have you of a of a book that has been written before I even got in here, and everybody involved is just kind of catching on. But we're, it's like an escalator that's already going and everyone on it is knows more about it than I do. And it's just a matter of, you know, just staying on long enough to get it. But it, I definitely feel like I'm not a part of a master plan, so to speak. And I don't think anyone is because we don't know what we don't know. Um, and so and, and I and I probably have the most time out of everybody. I still don't know. Ariane, can I just clarify one thing? I, I, I don't want, it's not a back and forth issue. My concern is not that it's on the web. I think it should be on the web, but I think it should be PDFs. My concern is putting it on this proprietary platform that is going, that making changes, I'm sorry, it is not going to be easier. I know that you've said that we're in your uh, professional life, it's easy to make changes in, on things. It, it's not. Look at the problems that we 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 haven't had a successful getting the getting just the original on in a way that that without going that you know what Mike described it's not going to be easy and 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 Evelyn is only one person she's got lots to do and this she's not a technical person and 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 also there, there's no redundancy. So that the the date problem that Carlton mentioned, the, the misspelling of of uh, Nick, Nikki's name, there there are tons of mistakes that are made, and uh, which are I'm I'm not blaming anyone honestly, but the, we you you've got to have backup. So don't build a system that is dependent on a capacity that we just don't have. It, I, I think it should be on the web. I just want to clarify that. That's not, I'm not saying it shouldn't be on the web, but it, but this interactive thing that this company did is not going to work. I guarantee you, it's not going to work. SP, you're speaking of SP group. I agree. I think it's but SP. that's not the point. Um, I mean, I, I think that, point. you know, I, I think Sorry. we have to defer to Mike on that. And, you know, honestly, some of these, issues seem like staffing, which is always, um, I don't know, I work at a agency that's always understaffed. So that's cool the group. amount of work that we do. So I, I just, I assume the city has a similar kind of issue. Um, so I don't know, Mike, if you want to respond to that, if. Yeah, I mean, it's the, the platform that this is being put together on is not proprietary. Uh, it's it's ArcGIS and we we at the city have our own license, but we aren't, um, in order to get this project to move through, we need to have help. So we hired somebody, a different group, SE group, who also has um, the platform and they're gonna be building out our site for us. And then it's gonna be put onto our GIS account. When that happens, a lot of these go away. The trick comes in is they're building in the ArcGIS website, and then they have to take a page out and give it to us to put on our website. And that's where we're having an issue is trying to get that, that handoff done, because then the handed off piece is looking for the site license. When this gets adopted, that those, those types of technical issues go away. And we have a, a number of the uh, staff that have a lot of experience with this type of website and there are a lot of people in the community if we needed to make updates that we could reach out to them our new 
planning and zoning assistant that starts next Monday. He has a master's degree in GIS. He is a GIS uh, expert, so he is very familiar with these types of things. So we do have the technology. We do have the stuff in-house. Um, and, you know, as, as, as I said, I mean, I, this has been a decision that we have worked on as a committee and a commission. It was a proposal that was made, but it was a decision. I don't make decisions. I make proposals and recommendations. And it was a recommendation that the commission agreed in the past that this was the direction we wanted to go to. And that's why we continue to pursue down this path. And we're using SE Group and their experience to go through and um, basically build out what we propose to do. And um, for all of its uh, issues and, and little things that we've had to deal with, I've been, you know, for me, I've put a lot of personal um, uh, energy of, of just a lot of my own personal uh, passion into this project to try to, um, and, you know, I have a lot of concern that, you know, I was really worried, you know, is this going to actually work? I mean, we put a lot of effort into it. Is it going to actually work? And I've been really happy over the past, you know, six weeks of, especially the, the, the implementation plan boards are really, really, really coming together well. And I'm, I, you know, I really like the way these next three storyboards came out i think they're really nicely done um and i think as we go through and continue again this is this is not the public hearing process this is the public input process and we're going to have a lot of public input out of a long period of time uh six months five months to, to go through and keep making these iterations better we aren't coming here and this is what the complaint would do if if we had this all all wrapped up and we came in peter would be complaining this is a done deal. This is a done deal. You guys aren't even looking for public. It's not. We're coming here with very much saying, we expect this to change. And we are changing this as we're getting public input. We're like, that's a good idea. Let's make that change. That's a good idea. Let's make that change. And we're making a very iterative process. And I think by the time we get to September and October, we're going to have a really great product. And I think you're all going to be happy with it. And uh, I, I really hope that's where we get to. Um, because. Um, I think when I show you a few of the things that we've gotten done over the past week or two, um, you know, I hope you guys are, you know, happy with the changes that we're making uh, and that you guys will give us a green light to make more changes. And again, this is your product, your project, and um, we're just here to kind of make that, kind of make that a reality. But yes, I, as much as it's me, my project, uh, it's, it's, it's your project. You have to approve it. I'm just making recommendations. Yes, Carlton. I mean, it like I'm trying to use the like I said urgency over anger, uh, uh, but I I really sympathize with uh, Peter um, because you it's it I don't feel like it's a it's my I don't feel like it's our project I and I feel like there are things that are being done that is wording just sleight of hand I just put it out there because it doesn't matter for me I'm not like act like it. I feel like my intelligence is being, um, you know, um, questioned. Like Mike, you've been in this for a long time, and and like the fact that we is we're already building in this is going to take a long time. These are defeatist words. These are low. It's low vibrational. We should be more aspirational than that because time is not of the essence at this point. Um, well, I, you know, Carlton, just to share as somebody who's been part of the planning commission since I think believe this process has started. Um, you know, I'm sorry that you weren't on the planning commission earlier, but there was a you lot don't have to of... apologize. There's no apology. I'm just I'm okay. I'm just, just, I'm just saying you. there was a lot of work. I remember a lot of meetings and I think Aaron remembers this too. There's a lot of meetings where we went very carefully over the language and the proposed goals and all the it, and it's not all about the initial, us. It's about all the, the initial. It's not I just, about us, hey, though. Carlton, can I finish, please? Sure thing. All the initial outline and wording came from the committees. The planning commissioners worked on it. Um, is it what everybody wants? No, it's not. It's not perfect, and I'm sure our processes are never perfect. Um, but I just wanted to share that. 
you know, although you weren't on the planning commission, there was there was a process and there was a participation by the planning commission and the original, you know, outline from the committees. Right. And then let me ask, I'm just asking this, how much was the public engaged about it? Because it doesn't matter what we do. In well, the, 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 the idea of having the committees come up with the the aspirations and goals and strategies initially is that that is but who are we consulting for those aspirations and goals? Who are we consulting for the aspirations and so, goals ourselves? So, so Carlton, at, at the outset of this process, there was a very deliberate step-by-step -step process by which the planning commission reached out to the relevant subcommittees within the town apparatus. So there was a lot of consultation with the various subcommittees, which fed into developing the goals and aspirations that are reflected in the storyboards that you see today. So the and process- I'm asking, I'm process, asking process, how process, much of on, the I'm, public I'm trying to answer your question. This. I'm trying to okay. answer your question. Let me do that. Do we have time? So because the plan, so the planning commission decided to engage with those subcommittees to try to, to gather as much information that we could. What happened over the next four years was calling those, you know, from those discussions, gathering that information, calling it, distilling it down to what we have now. And the process was always contemplated having public input and feedback once we got all that information together and put it in a presentable form. That's where we are today. Well, when you said it was always contemplated and you have, um, we, we already have a plan that we've used before. So what is the contemplation? Where are we starting? Are we starting from 2017 contemplation or are we starting from as we go with our editing? Con when do we stop contemplating and actually engage in a way where, um, you know, Mr. Mr. Kelman feels like he's a part of it and others? Yeah, I mean, all, all I can say is, Carlton, is again, I think what Mike and Ariane and I are trying to tell you is, is we have always welcomed Peter's input. We have we have taken that to heart. We have made changes. Some, you know, some of the changes have been made, some are not. This is part of the process. Like I'm not quite sure I understand your question. Okay, well like, let me what, let me what, let me form what, what it in we're what I'm saying. Let me I'm saying so let me form was, it in I'm a way. You said you didn't understand commission. my question. You said you didn't understand my question. So don't answer a question you don't understand. So let me let me form it in a way so that you understand. What I'm stating to you is this, Mr. Kelman is the only person who really comes to things. I see legacy issues regarding the planning commission and the and the and and the the plan. I see also decisions made in a way where people are comfortable with what they're doing. I don't see Mr. I like, you know, there are people who have major money involvements, and they're on the volunteer side of things. So. As far as the decisions are made, it feels like there's decisions made in public. And then those public decisions to satisfy the public are agreed upon publicly, but then we then take that somewhere else. And in the wording where the public doesn't have time to read the wording, we have June 26 for a meeting type of stuff going on. And you can be a part of it for decades. I've watched the planning commission meetings for decades. The wordings are not matching with what people are, are are saying, and the public is just getting worn out. And we know this, so I'm just I'm just saying let's let's just stop the low like low vibration, slow drift of like I don't know what's going on because the urgency is like me, like I the, like I, I'm I'm boots on the ground, and like there may be like other things that I'm not seeing, but the the fact that we have to go back and forth until it gets to the public let's just present it to the public sooner because the public is smart so i'm i'm sorry is is there a question in there no okay can i just clarify one thing i was on one of those committees i was on the uh housing task force and what we submitted bears very little resemblance to what ended exactly. up exactly yeah i ain't paying it oh excuse me i'm sorry sir i thought i was on mute go ahead no, I'm just saying that going to the committees in 2018, which is when it was, very little that those committees submitted, and even some of the committees weren't even appropriate, like having the um, 
the public arts uh, committee be, being the one that, so of course the plan ended up being all about public visual arts as was pointed out. That's, that's just because you went to committees doesn't mean that you really have tapped the right people, the right citizens. And I think Carlton is right. Yeah, and, and, and Aaron's right. You guys have listened to me. I'm just one person. I know quite a few people who don't have the time that I have or the stupidity that I have to keep trying. This has not been a real public engagement process. It just hasn't been. Okay, well, I at, at this point, I guess I would welcome I don't, I don't personally, given that we do, I believe have a, a time, you know, we have to have a city plan by December of 2025. Is that right, Mike? Or else yeah. um, we face some consequence, which I'm blanking on at the moment. Um, I, you know, all, to me, all processes are imperfect and I welcome thoughts on let, how we can do it next time. I do not want to go back to the drawing board. I recognize that our process was imperfect. Um, yes, the planning commission did substantially change a lot of what the committees um, presented to us, but I thought that was our job as people who are appointed to the planning commission. That's how I understood it. Again, I, if you want to send a written critique of of the process and how you would do it differently next time, I think we can we can chew on that. Um, but, but, but that, that's not what I'm suggesting. But by the way, well, then what are you suggesting? I don't understand. Uh, no, I am suggesting three very concrete things. One is go back and get the words that Kirby and other people on the commission actually wrote before it got turned over to the SE group in, in, and put on into the magic thing. Those are the words that should be put out on, a, on PDFs online and have people respond to to those and make a real effort through the committees. I suggest that's number two, go back to the committees, the appropriate committees, including things like this uh, uh, social and economic justice committee, committees that you might not have tapped either because they didn't exist or because they don't have a particular chapter, but run the whole thing by the, 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 uh, the uh, thing, CJAC and, and MEAC and you know the committees are really cut across and ask them to respond, have have get have them have committee members respond. That would be members of that would be members of the public who have the time and who have the interest. As for it being rewritten by the commission, other than Kirby, I think this has been primarily written by Mike. All right. And I think that more look, you guys are all volunteers, but number three is I think that maybe divide up among you each of you take a chapter and go through it the way I did. Read it, pick out, pick up the errors, pick up the um, omissions, ask questions. That's what a, a copy editor asks questions. It says to the author, did you mean this? Because it sounds like that's what you meant. You, you've got to have a, 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 a more robust, I'm not saying start from scratch, start from, but go back at least and get what Kirby wrote. Kirby wrote some damn good stuff. I don't see it anymore. I think it's gone. So that that that's for this time. That's not for and next. Time. Let's for let's be clear. You've got to stop making accusations about things you don't know. About saying things like, "Well, Mike said this, and the fire chief is this." Well, I only made you. You just you know you just said most of this is written by Mike. Yeah. I. It's not. Well, this has been a product. My product that I wrote are the things that went to the committees at the start because committees shouldn't start with a blank slate of paper. So I gave them outlines of structures of everything. And I said, this is your place to start. And they made changes and they did things I agreed with and they did things I didn't agree with, but it didn't matter. It wasn't my plan anymore. And they sent it to the planning commission. And I said, these are the things I liked. These were the things I didn't like. And they made a number of changes. A lot of changes I didn't like. A lot of changes I liked. But it doesn't matter at this point. This is not my plan. You can't go out and tell people, well, Mike wrote this. Mike did not write this. I did not write this. I and so Kirby, let's be clear. Kirby let's Mike be clear. Wilson. When it went to SE Group, the planning commission, 
reviewed and approved them, and they made edits to what SE Group had put together, including going through and saying, we want you to take these pieces out and put in exactly what we wrote. So they had initially gone through and done some editing for putting things into the synergies box. And the planning commission went back and said, put exactly what we wrote. Um, things had changed in the implementation strategies. They said, take out what you've edited and put in exactly what we said. And then there were places that they said, no, we do need to make the editing that you recommend at the start. So these things in the storyboards have been reviewed by the planning commission. Now it may be a different planning commission than sits here today, and that's fine. We can go through and re-review them and make additional edits. But this commission has its fingerprints all over this for good or bad. And as, as Ariane and others have pointed out, it's not expected to be perfect at this point. But at some point, we've got to start going to the public and seeing what do you like, what do you not like? And that's where we're at right now. Where, where, did, we, where did we hit right on the mark? Where have we not hit on the mark so we can make this a better product? And that's that's where this is at, and that's where this is going. And I'm, and as I said, I'm very happy with where things are right now. What I'm seeing right now, I'm very happy with personally, professionally. Um, and I'm not making edits in the background. So if you're, if if Carlton, if you're thinking I'm I'm making edits in the background, you know, it gets approved no, and somebody's not, I, look, tweaking tweaking no, words in we, the background. I'm not. They're they're not. Need the I will let you know when I make changes. We don't need to flip hypotheticals. I'm just simply trying to keep the sunlight on everything. That's all. Yep. So everything, the changes, that's why a lot of times you'll see uh, there may be comments of, well, nobody's made a change to these goals. Well, I'm, I have specifically said I'm not going to make any changes to, to the goals or the aspirations, but we had a conversation at the last meeting about the strategies, and I said, can I go through and make the amendments to update? Because Peter and others have pointed out, and it's true, these had been adopted, you know, we had reviewed them as a commission starting in 2019, 2020, 21, 22. So we're reviewing these things over time. Well, by the time we get to the end, we're ready to package this and start going to the public. Some of those 2019, 2020 things are a little bit dated and we didn't go back and update them because we didn't want to keep going around and around in circles. But what we did do, you guys said to me, for the strategies, go through and update them. We didn't change them for policy. We changed them for its, you know, if it said we should adopt this program, and in 2023 we adopted it, well, we should go through and say we, we should continue this program because it's already in effect now. When we wrote it, it was a proposal. Now it's reality. So those are the little changes that we're making right now that Evelyn and I are going through and making changes on. Um, Mike, Mike, can I ask you and Arianne a, a question? If, if you want to really put this out to the public, would it not be appropriate to put it out to the committees and have each committee take responsibility for reviewing it um, and to get people come to, to come to their meetings? You are not going to draw people. To, I don't care whether it's in Wilder Arts or or the uh, how many people have you had so far? A dozen. That's not the pro that's not the public. People don't have the time that to 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 do it. And the summer it's going to be a disaster. So I and we we intend to go back to the different commissions with with the products. We're just trying to, um, as as we said, we're especially Evelyn and I are working on a little bit of an iterative project process to take the the comments we've gotten so far. And a lot of them have been your suggestions to go through and say, this should be written differently or in this way. And that takes time to go through each one of these, to go through and carefully review them and, and bring them up and kind of make a better product that we can go and take to the, to the commissions. So they've got a good product. They don't have a product, as you said, full of errors and, and outdated material. Let's get these things where we want them and then go to the committees and the committees again this nothing that we're putting out even after we do all these edits is considered a final product we're still making them but we want to get to a a, a a next step where we've got these in really good shape we're good with the format we're good with the content 
now let's have a really good discussion on the policy because that's what we want to have. This is all about having a policy discussion. What are our goals and are these strategies going to help us accomplish our goals? And that's what that's what we want to be able to take. And I intend to take them back to all the various committees so they can get their input. Um, I want this to be as smooth of a process when we get to it, whether it's in the fall, or whether it's in the winter. I want a nice, smooth process when we go to public hearings because I want to have as many people who've had their fingerprints on this to go through and say, we've seen it, we've looked at it, and we feel this is a good product. Okay. Um, I, just hope, I just hope you can get people to go through some of those other chapters the way I went through the housing chapter. I don't have the time or the expertise or the interest in, in all the, all of the chapters. So, I, but I, unless you're getting someone who to people to really sit down and spend some time on things that matter, get someone from tra for transportation, get somebody for economic development get to really comb through it. And if possible, again, I would really urge you to go back to CJAC and some so social and economic justice committee and some of these other committee that the ADA committee, get some of the, the voices of people whose voice is not generally heard. I think that's some of what Carlton is getting at. Okay. Well, I think Mike said he will go back to the committees and we should move along with our agenda because we do have some other some other business to get to today. Um, okay, so the next item on the agenda was preview the next three chapters. Um, Mike, were you thinking that we just like look at them online or yeah i can pull them up do you guys okay. have a preference for which one do you want to look at the storyboards or do you want to look at the implementation plans i could pull up either the the storyboards aren't on the website yet again for the same reasons i mentioned but the implementation plans are um are online I think you should pull up the storyboard since we can we can access the the the, the implementation strategies. All right. Seems. I got bumped out of my Outlook where I had it. All right, hold on. Oh, now. I had it pulled up because I was all ready for it, and then I must have X'd out of my Outlook. Now I got to find it again. Okay. Uh, been there. And there's the pop up box that we are trying to get rid of. Uh, so again, this like the other chapters, uh, we kick off with uh, the the chapter title and um, the sub chapter. And so most of what we talk about with utilities and facilities, where the utilities are usually four types of utilities. So we're usually looking at water, sewer, storm water, and district heat. Um, and then facilities or any of the government buildings. So we're not really talking about the services and things that happen at the field. So think about the baseball field is the facility. What go, what happens at the baseball field is a community service. So usually you're going to have recreation talked about in community services, which we do, but the facility would probably be talked about here. Um, and our plan for the 
utilities and facilities are uh, quality and quantity municipal services and utilities are well administered, uh, sufficient to meet current and future demands, um, and to further net zero compliance. So a lot of these from a structural standpoint kind of remain the same. We've got our planning context. We talk about the municipal services uh, and each one of these shows up on the right as it goes through the outline of the plan. Um, talking about each one of the utilities first, that was water. Then we go to wastewater, it shows all of the, um, and again, any of these can be moved around, kind of pinned in here. But yeah, if you're out here, we can move around the screen to look at the different areas uh, where the sewer and water lines go. We have a section on stormwater management. Again, this, these are all the stormwater pipes. So we've got a very well mapped out um, system. The Public Works Department has a lot of information that we can grab from. These are district heat lines. And again, it's talking about in the left, giving a summary of each one of these. Um, the major electric transmission that exists in town, the various uh, phase three powers, GMP power. And again, a lot of these are required. So this is uh, now a private utility and then our municipal facilities. These are the locations of all the different municipal facilities that we have, including playgrounds, recreation centers, um, and also not just municipal, but other, other ones like the library um, are also included here. And again, you've got the ability to scroll through the entire thing. And then at the end, it gives you also the ability to just go through individually and reconnect. And again, each one of these has, of course, the ability to um, zoom in and move around. So uh, that's how the, the boards are set up. So. And the uh, same as the other ones, it then moves into synergies. Do you know, do you know that the waste, that the water treatment plant provides 1.7 million gallons of water to 3,100 customers in Montpelier and Berlin? Uh, I think these are district heat lines, I think, but. Um, and then again, the aspirations and goals, these were approved. Um, I've reviewed each one of these. So this time I've gone through to make sure that they're all correct. I've reviewed them all. The implementation summary, this is the part that was written by, by you guys and plugged in. Who's involved? This is, again, the what we had put together. It talks about the Department of Public Works, does most of this, and the various committees, uh, various um, other departments, um, like the Recreation Department and others. Are, are the others. And then at the bottom, there is an opportunity um, because we're in this format, um, you need to sign in to be able to do the survey. And again, that this is the hiccup that we're trying to get fixed for the next, for the next time. Um, do you guys have any questions or comments on this one before I pop open the next one? And again, we'll have this up hopefully within the next day or two. And then you guys can carefully go through and read them all. But overall, that's kind of the information piece, what we're trying to do. Uh, the energy plan, I kind of like the way this one came out. I was kind of happy with this one. And there we go again. as the introduction to what the energy chapter is all about, introducing the net zero. Um, generally talking about the consequences of different things, landslides, uh, flooding that result from climate change. So uh, 
what they put together, and this this was I thought pretty cool, was they they were able to tap a lot of different data. So existing renewable energy, these are all the rooftop solar PV sites in the city of Montpelier. So uh, also talks about the there are only a couple of ground mounted sites. Uh, solar thermal, so these are sites that are used for heating hot water. These are the biomass sites, so uh, burning wood, uh, so the wood chip plant for the for the city, and uh, National Life has its own uh, biomass plant, and a couple other places have biomass as well. Uh, you can click on a couple things for electric charging stations. and the bioliquid fuels. Uh, and then this continues on. So this one actually has kind of a continued, the planning context kind of keeps going uh, to get into talk about some of their accomplishments. So I think this was, these are the goals. So by 2050, fossil fuel will be eliminated entirely and 100% of the energy needs, municipal, residential, commercial will be net, met renewably. And the 2030 goal is to have 100% of energy used for municipal government operations, thermal, electrical, and transportation to be renewable or offset. So also a part of the planning context, um, MIAC and the SE group put together what were some of the major accomplishments, including the capital district heat. Um, so this was a project that was completed 2000. 14 maybe, just before I, I got here. It was worked by my predecessor, a lot of work they did. Um, net metering sites. We are going to go through and add to this page because this doesn't include any of the city's net metering. So we actually have, and it's not shown here, but up on Log Road, if you drive out Elm Street past the rec fields and past all that as you're maybe a mile to the end of the town, there's a little road on the left called Log Road. And the city actually, uh, there's actually a solar farm up there and all the electricity from that solar farm goes to power city hall. It, it net meters city hall, the police station, the fire station, and a lot of other buildings that the city has. And we also have a second site in the town of Sharon. So we should show which buildings are also net metered. This is showing the water resource recovery facility and the accomplishments there that is set up for capturing methane. And we don't yet use it to make electricity, but we could. But we do use it to burn the methane to dry solids and heat buildings. Then like the others, we're talking about what are the synergies, how we relate to the other chapters, Again, this is all exactly what was approved by the Planning Commission. The implementation summary, these were all approved by the Planning Commission. Who's involved? These are all, again, um, were the pieces that were by you guys. So, again, I thought this one came out really nice. I thought they did a good job with um, especially the the fact that it added the accomplishments and these other pieces, I thought it was a nicely done. They did a good job with the pictures and the, the notes. I thought this was a nice one. Mike, could you go all the way up to the top, like the introductory paragraph? Yep. Okay. I'm just curious, because I mean, it seems like all of this is about meeting that net zero requirement. Um, is there anywhere that it talks about like what the current state of fossil fuel fossil fuel use is? So where we are at with some of those uh, kind of those benchmark goals? Well, we can uh, see like where you know you should. I think that map is really cool. Lower down, yeah, where you can see like all of the different renewable energy structures in place now. But I'm curious if it wouldn't be helpful to know like. <laughs> kind of like the bad story, you know, like um, how many homes right now are 
uh, powered by fossil fuels. I, I assume it's like every other house that's not on this map, you know? Um, so kind of like see like what, where, how much do we have to improve in order to meet these goals? And maybe we don't have that data, but I think it would be helpful to see like how much of a transition we're asking. Yeah, we do have uh, a dashboard and maybe that's also what needs to get added in is maybe a link to the dashboard and a summary of, like you said, where, where, where we're at, because, you know, we've, again, like, like everything else the the dashboard they have and the information they have shows how much success we've had, you know, we've gone from this really high amount and it's gone down, but yeah. we're still far from being net zero. And, you know, maybe that's, that could be, and that could be an infographic that maybe, maybe replaces. I think the information's good, but maybe with the accomplishments, we need to have something that comes out at the end with, Like the challenge. Maybe maybe one more piece of where where we're at, where we have to go. Kind of let's c capture that last yeah. piece of. You know, maybe it's just a graph that, bar chart that kind of. And you see, like. Yeah. yeah the this is. Over time. This is this is where we've made improvements. Oh, isn't that great? We've reduced the amount of electricity, but boy, we've got a long ways to go to, to, uh, meeting another goal. Yeah, I think that would be great. Yeah, I'll put I'll put that in. Um, Peter, I you've got your hand raised. Uh, yeah, Mike, I agree that this is a, a quite a good one, and I believe one of the reasons it's quite a good one is because you have in fact continued with uh, to work with MEAC, which is a an activist committee, a, a committee that really has been uh, um, in the trenches and pushed many of these ideas. And I, again, I, I think you should consider that that might be why this is so good. I do have one question uh, about all of these maps. Who is checking their accuracy? I know, for example, that I've got a solar solar roof, uh, top solar, and my house is not shown in this. I know that I, I looked at the uh, some of the housing maps, and I know that there are things that are not accurate. Who is checking the accuracy of these maps? Yeah, I mean, I think in some cases we will need to at least put down the the um, the data reference. So that way, at least we know, because it may be that the data, um, this is pulled from, you know, uh, Green Mountain Power data 19 or uh, 2018. And it might be that your system went on after that, and that's why it's not shown. Actually, but, a lot of systems went on after that. That, that that's why if you're going to, I be, was just throwing, I was just throwing that number out because I don't know what what the data is because it doesn't right. actually have on it in here uh, when the data is accurate current to. Okay. Also, uh, in in the housing chat in the housing chapter, there are a lot of rental units that are not appearing. There are condos that are not appearing. There are, uh, it, 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 somebody has either got to check or have a, a, a uh, disclosure caveat that this is incomplete or, or this is old or whatever. Cause, it, no, cause we're it, working on, I mean, yeah, for the, for the housing one, which, which is done, we're already working on that. That's been a flagged issue that we, we, the, the data they, they were um, drawing from was, um not as accurate as the data because i wanted them to use the grand list data so we're trying right now to see how we can link to the grand list data which has the most has a more accurate data for let's say adus and condos um so we we just want to make sure we're grabbing from the right data so that's part of what we're trying to do right now with the the second the second round is we're moving on to this but um, Evelyn and I are still working on pieces that need to get updated. Um, as we said, we we 
sent in the information on this, but it hasn't been updated for the locations of those. Um, where was it? It was down here for the, the net metering ones. Uh, those were sent last week. They clearly aren't updated yet for the net metering sites. We would like to get that updated. But um, yeah, I think the data references we need so that way we, um, and I don't know where they were, Structurally, we would put that, but um, I'll work with them to kind of come up with whether it goes at the bottom of the text, you know, in you know, in, in a in a thing that goes through data data from this data source with a date, so that way at least we know that's where this comes from, and we can go back and double either double check it or find if it's the the correct source or the best source of information. Um, so yes, good point. We'll get the data reference so we know where they are. And Mike, also in terms of housing rental, since since unlike Barry, we don't have a rental registry. We actually have no idea where all the rental places are. So I'm not sure that you're going to be able to get valid um, uh, maps of those. So I'm just questioning whether they should it should be on it at all because I'm sure that you 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 missed probably at least 25% of the rental units in in the, in the city, because we don't have a rental registry, we don't know. Yep, and we'll have to see. Um, like I said, we're, we're gonna go through and do a, a little bit of a, a care, careful check on that one. And the last one real quick. Again, same as the other one. I'm currently searching for a new picture. I don't like this picture. So um, I don't want a dirty public transit bus as my main kickoff picture. A picture says a thousand words, Mike, and you're right. Yes, and that's a bad <laughs> picture. Yeah, come ride public transit and our dirty buses on our dirty streets. Um, so anyways, um, the, the primary, for everybody else who maybe hasn't, gone through the primary push of the the transportation committees when they reviewed this and um and and the planning commission was really to start to put um all the other forms of transportation on equal footing with um with roads uh as opposed to being kind of kind of second class citizens um the idea was we really need to be thinking about walking and biking at the same and given the same level of investment and attention as we do to roads. Our roads are in bad shape. We do need to pay attention. We do need to do a lot. But that's really what they were trying to do is to make sure that um, that's why we have a complete streets plan. That's why we have uh, strategies for implementing that plan. Um, so to cultivate a transportation system that treats all modes of transportation equally and prioritizes the safety for all travelers. So that kind of captures it. And then to support a societal shift to non-fossil fuel future for transportation. So I think that's a pretty good capture right there of what the two primary visions are for this chapter. Um, so again, we've got uh, this one, we've got a, just a Dropbox where you can go through and click through where the bus routes are and metered parking where that exists. In the city parking lots. So uh, actually, I'd have to kind of move everything over to kind of see that. But that's the idea. Um, again, you'd be able to click on these different boxes and show. Um, and we have, we needed to have this disclaimer put in, which I'm glad to see they they got that one in, um, because the plan has to talk about certain issues. Transportation plans, uh, as I said, state law says you have to talk about certain things. One of them is rail lines. One of them is uh, airports. Well, we don't have any airports, so we just simply say we don't have any, but they're located in Berlin and Burlington. Uh, a couple of signature projects, the Taylor Street uh, Transit Center and the bike path were the two biggest uh, transportation improvements that have happened over the last 10 years, uh, both long-term projects that finally got completed. Um, oh, looks like they just grabbed the bite right out of it. So, ah, 
2018 map shown for now to be updated. So they did put this in. So this is our street typology. This is our really our bread and butter for how we have a complete street. Um, I won't go into it, but every there are seven different street typologies. Um, and each one is itself um, functions for all users, walkers, bikers, public transit, cars, trucks. It's meant to cover all of them in a safe manner. So as speed limits increase, you have to have a bike lane, for example. As traffic increases, you have to put a sidewalk. And if traffic's at a certain level, traffic uh, sidewalk has to be on one side. Once it reaches a certain level, it needs it on both sides. Uh, in some cases, you can have on-street parking. Some cases, you can't. And the idea is where you find, and this is true, where you find roads that are complete streets, they tend to operate very well. Where we have roads that are not complete streets, you have a lot of issues. So Barry Street, for example, is a notoriously difficult street. It's not a complete street. Um, you, you can't safely bike it because you're being expected and asked to bike faster than people usually can. So any of it, that's what the plan is. This is what we want in the future. Now, how do we get there? That's through the capital improvement plan. And the city uses the CIP to schedule repairs. This talks a little bit about how we do that. Bit of paving of Main Street. Must do better to address stormwater issues. So um, we now have systems for our street trees which go through and actually filter the water. And Taylor Street is a uh, prime example of a really 21st century street. The street trees actually collect the water, the storm water, treat it at the bottom of the tree well is um, the storm, storm water collection system. So the water goes in, goes through, some of it gets sucked up into the tree and what gets left over then goes into the storm water system as opposed to going directly into a down down inlet, it, it gets filtered through the trees. Um, so it's a really neat process. We like to do that for more sections of town. Same thing, synergies. Uh, we're still looking for a fun fact. We're gonna grab that. But for the most part, again, these I thought um, came out very nice. I thought these, these have kind of come out a little better than the first three did in really kind of doing a little bit of what I was hoping they would do. So that's why we're kind of going back to those first three to say, let's, let's, let's get these first three to kind of be more like these new three. Um, Cause I think they came out, I think these three came out a lot better than the first three, but any thoughts on transportation? I mean, if you're happy with it, like, like you know, for as far as I'm concerned, this this is it's very it's a great learning process for a bigger agenda that I have with Montpelier that doesn't include anybody here, but it, it's okay um, because I, when you say you're happy with certain things and and you, and you know with the interactive map, some of the stuff looks dated from like a tech standpoint, but you may be happy with it, but it's like I'm not sure whether or not we really have the right eyes on it to even be considered something that needs to be uh, public. That's all I have to say. Okay, and I'm always open to, again, that's why we said these are, it's an open and fluid process. If if you look at it and say, this would be, this would be a better, or this information really isn't useful. Let's find different information that tells a different story. That we will, we will by all means, just jump right in and uh, and find better data. If that's what the commission wants, we will, remove a section to go through and say, let's not, you know, we're showing you where the sewer and water lines were. Maybe that's not really important. Maybe what is important is X and we can go out and try to find that data. Because the idea is this is supposed to, this is meant to be the educational portion. Um, this is for, not for the people who are trying to drill in to know exactly what the policy wonk is. This is for people who are like, I wanna know about transportation in Montpelier. And I can read this and get an understanding of what's going on, what we're trying to do, and have a good sense of the big picture. This is your 50,000 foot. You want to know the details? Click on that box on the bottom that talks about the implementation strategy. 
And then you can start reading in on the nuts and bolts of what our aspirations, goals, and what our specific strategies are. And, and that's so we have information. How... We have information regarding that people would actually want to do what you just described, because it sounds like that would be something that you would want to do instead of the, the general public, because that's not something the general public would probably want to. I, I'm just simply stating to you that all of this, from a software standpoint, from a tech standpoint, is extremely dated, and also by the time it gets put out. It's not, none of this is going to be a, a factor. I mean, it's it's, it, but we can keep going on it. It's just we're going, we're we're basically just building like books for a digital era. And I mean actual paper books instead of the digital era. It, it's it's dy the dynamics of it. I just the, it, I mean the public can vote on it. But I'm just saying from a public standpoint, what we're even offering them is dated. Okay. I mean, you, you got Sun, you got Sun Common who's gone out a bit. They're going, I mean, they're they're going bankrupt. Um, you know, the 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 track cell uh solar panels, I mean that that's been 10 years and 20 years. Some of them don't even like turn anymore with the sun. I'm just like the pictures. You know, it just, it's, it, yeah. So what, I'm sorry, what were you going to say, Mary, um, Maria? Oh, I was just curious, like, what, how do you, I'm curious to hear, like, how this, um, we're, we're on the transportation one right now. Like, what are your ideas? I'd be much rather, I, I'd much rather, because I've extensively traveled the country and looked at other websites, I'd much rather give you an idea of what other people are doing rather than my ideas, because I, I I simply don't want to invent the wheel, um, so I, I'd be happy to share with you at another time. At this point, um, some other websites from other cities, towns, and municipalities that may offer some more suggestions on how to go about this in a faster way as well. So that's my suggestion, and I know okay. that we have time. We have time to fumble with you know presentations, but we don't have time for me to talk. So I'll shut up. No, I would, if you could send like examples of that to me and Ariane and Mike, that would be great. I've been trying I'll, to look at what I'll other cities, on. like what their city plans look like, but um, I don't, I got I would I go to be... Fort Wayne, Indiana. I'd start with Fort Wayne, Indiana. I live there uh, because after I left here, uh, I need to be close to Chicago to truck. And I, you know, I, I lived in, the, it's called Cityscape. It was overlooking the semi-professional baseball uh, team uh, that was placed in there. It it, it all is it's like my my dream is for the for our baseball team to have a new stadium, a new pool, and and condos over in that area. That's kind of my my future for Montpelier. So I'd say Fort Wayne, Indiana, would be a great place to start. Then you know uh, Pete Buttigieg's uh, neighborhood. Uh, what is that? Uh, um, Evings, is it Evingston or um, Indiana? Anywhere Indiana, because the Rust Belt had they 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 had to recreate themselves, so they were very um, strategic and modern at, in in how they presented themselves to the public. Um, so I just say that I, I also I have conversations with some people who say you know, Montpelier is different than any other town, not necessarily even if it is a capital. Um, we're people, we're humans, and it's no different uh, than any other place because a, a Walmart is within walking distance or driving distance. It, it's, it's, we don't need to reinvent the wheel, that's all. And we're paying these consultants money to, you know, tailor this however we want on interactive maps. Like there's, the, the, the meter is ticking. I just want, are you, do you mean like the, we should look up their city websites or like, just like the city itself just seems more. What, do you, what, what are you asking me? What would you like to know? Like what websites do you think are cool? <laughs> That's like what we do. I know, but, when you, like... but, but when you said that, when you said what, but, but when you said either the city website, which one would you like the city website? Oh, or... like you're what? saying, was it Evanston or? But what or, are you looking for? What would you like to see? The what two are you cities Googling? that you, the two cities that you just mentioned in Indiana. But what do you? But what do you? I said Fort Wayne, Indiana. Try. Okay. Well, like, you know, 
Could you, I mean, could you send us links of what you're talking I about? Stated, I, I stated I would later on right. in the week okay. and not today. That's what I stated, right. yes. Okay. okay. That's great. Um, I just want to be mindful of, uh, we want to approve the minutes and move the, um, uh, look at the matrix. But um, Peter, if you have one last comment, go ahead. Yeah, Mike, Mike uh, I, I would just say again, uh, this one does, uh, bear the stamp of activist committees. And that cuts both ways. I mean, it's good because it means there are people, citizens who are, you know, care and are involved, who put their stamp on it. But I do think that the commission needs to weigh a little bit, and this is true in the energy chapter as well, that there are also working people, people who have lived in Montpelier for many years, have homes they can barely afford, concerned about taxes, concerned about potholes, et cetera. So there needs to be a kind of, a, I think, a balance of, you know, these in enthusiasm about bicycles and walking and so forth, but also a recognition that there are, pe there are many people in this town who are pretty wedded to their gas guzzling cars and they're, they, they're residents too. And we've got to figure out a way to also address uh, uh, improvements in um, the roads and whatnot. So uh, it's a tricky issue to to balance those. And I I hope you you guys will all, as a commission, be thinking about it. Thanks. Okay. Okay, and that'd be a great comment to make at the public input meeting too, um, if you're able to attend. But I think we should move on for the rest of our agenda um, and just get a brief look at the matrix and then approve the minutes because I can't stay past 730. So let's okay. So yeah, the 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 storyboards we won't go through, but they they look very much the same. I do want to is everybody out? It's disabled. Is there a way that I can share? Because I just Googled. It's it's this is not that deep. It, can I can I share a downtown Fort Wayne just so I can just get that off my plate? Because I got other stuff to do. Um, but it, this is a great starting point as an example. So is there a way I can share that to the team right now, or should I just email it? Do you know how to put uh, it? There says should be a... It says disabled for me right oh, now. Oh, chat, chat is disabled. I know how to do it. You yeah, can yeah. share. You can share. Um, share the screen. I haven't disabled well, I that feature. Yeah, I, I don't want to share the screen because I don't want to make it about me. Um, and this Fort Wayne situation. I just want to send it to you all because, or or you can just Google what I googled, and that's Fort Wayne, Indiana. Uh, and then I would I would just go to the particular one that says American Planning Association create great communities for all and uh and look look at that but again if i could okay. if i could just cut and paste and put it in the chat you could all just get that but that's disabled yeah it has to be disabled under vermont law so that's it's not because i'm being grumpy it's because i'm not allowed to anymore <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not implying that you were grumpy. You, the fact that you brought that in, I just want to I'll come back and say I'm not implying that. But thank you. No, no, I was just, just saying that. That's uh, sometimes I can't. I, we've got powers, and we've got things they've said we're not supposed to be able to do. Um, so I did want to just show this up. This is um, what Evelyn sent to me. So if you remember back um, to what the storyboards actually look like and we talk about the strategies and you'd see the stars across the top um and then there'd be a description and then on the right hand side you'd have the priorities this is the new format just wanted to let you guys know and this captures some of what the comments were that peter gave so this is just one um so this used to say um historic surveys program down here with new in parentheses, and then there was the description. 
what we've done is to shift or what we're recommending doing is to shift this up and say the title is now create new historic surveys program that would be the title it's on the top so it's a priority um, as opposed to saying implement goals at the top which kind of didn't you know that's not the important thing the implement goals is down here um, what's important is the title and so we've got that up there we've got it bigger we still have the description the priorities and the costs are now down here at the bottom with the responsible party and the implementation goals so it's going to look a little different but the content is mostly going to stay the same so this is what we're going to update the boards um, to go through I just need to plug this in before my I need to tether myself in before my headset turns off. So that was just what I wanted to show you. If there are any questions on that before I jump over to the matrix. Um, oh, that's good. Which, which I think looks better. I think it addresses a lot of uh, Peter's comments, which were good. Uh, it'll be clear. We still have to go through, um, as I said, updating and making sure that it's better wordsmith, better worded. We're going to go through all those. Now, one more. Um, share screen. All right. So this was the 2024 comments that we were talking about. Um, this is what the matrix looks like. I'm going to be I sent a copy of this to you, um, and I've been going through, mostly I've been trying to enter all of Peter's comments. And, and so the first comment is about what's the comment being made. The second one is the staff's comments or recommendations, and the third is what you do with it. So in some, some cases, there's no action at this time. Um, the orange ones are ones I've flagged that I need to do something or yellow I need to follow up with. The green ones are something that's done. You know, we've agreed to do it or maybe you've agreed we're not gonna make a change. And so those go, these are ones we all talked about, but these are all the ones we still have to go through. Um, and I don't know if we wanna just start in here and work our way down, but just to give you an idea, there's a lot of comments and this is what I've been trying to push through. I wanted to get this done so I could post it online. Um, and again, as people give us more comments, we will add them in. I, we are at number 60 right now. So gives a little bit of a flavor of what we're up to. And maybe we'll just jump in and have some conversation about uh, this was a recommendation from somebody who sent one in to the recommendation to apply for catalyst grant programs, which is, I didn't know what that was, so I had to look it up. It's the Northern Borders Grant. This fall to modernize water infrastructure and staff comments is we already have plans to apply for Northern Borders and to get on the priority list. Um, so there's, I don't know if there's much follow-up we need to do with that one. If that's just, like I said, people give us a comment we will respond to the comments and this goes through all of them. City should consider potential for artists and resources uh, for keeping artists here on a temporary basis. And I believe this is what is intended in the artists and residents implementation strategy. So I think we've already kind of addressed that, but it would be up to you to say, yes, that's fine. Or Mike, go find something and make a different recommendation for us to consider. So that's what would go in here. If there's something in yellow, I would go through and follow up on that in the future to make sure we've got it. And by the time we get done, I will have turned all these yellow ones to green. So is this Northern Borders thing, is that in, that seems like a utilities, uh, is that part of our, um, yeah, I, I haven't. This was a, a request that was made in the housing section um, and the reality is we are planning to apply for more Northern borders, but it, and it is actually, uh, to address the housing because that's one of the grants we're looking for to extend the water lines out to the country club road site. 
to help pay for the infrastructure out there. Um, so it may be one, I don't know how specific we want to get with our strategies. Um, we don't usually get as specific as apply for this grant. Um, but again, that's, that's a, that's a question of how much do we want to get into those details? Usually that's applying for grants is a little bit more of an operational piece. Um, kind of like you wouldn't say, let's go out and do a request for proposals on something. It's like, well, tell us what the project is and applying for grants and doing requests for proposals is just part of doing the project. So my sense would be, I wouldn't get that specific in our list of strategies. Um, but that's again up to up to the board as to how much detail you want to get into in those recommendations. So could I just ask a process question? I mean, what do you what do you need? You want it, you said you want to put it up on the website. Um, and I don't think we're gonna be able to get through this whole list no. tonight. Um, can it be a working document on the website or um, we'll keep adding to it and keep putting it on the website. Um, I just want everybody to know that if they don't see something in the right-hand column, that means the commission hasn't made a decision. So just because somebody makes a recommendation to do X and the staff recommendation in the middle is not to do X, um, the commission yeah. may oh. eventually do X. And so I just, you know, as long as people understand that's how this works. Um, and we've done these for all the zoning stuff. And eventually what we usually ask the commission to do, um, and in the past, as this really gets long and gets big, I will sometimes commissions will go through and say, can you just kind of highlight the ones that are that are the key policy ones? Or if it was Kirby or some of the planning chairs before that, we would kind of go through and do a quick thing to go through and say, yeah. You know, we, we can't sit here as a planning commission and review 150 individual comments, but we can go through and say, yeah, not, yeah, this, this one's okay. This one's okay. Let's talk about this one. Uh, this one, I agree with staff. This one, I agree with staff. And then we can go through and, I mean, everybody here is going to have all of them. And you could certainly go through and say, you know, Mike highlighted these in these colors because we talked about them and we think we agree with the staff recommendation on those. And then yeah. we can always bring them back in, or we can individually talk about each one of them. But usually, there's usually you will find a way because this is this is here for you, not for me, um, to make sure that we've captured as many of the comments. And if somebody says I didn't see my comment in there, but we can add it add it in. Um, but the idea is we'll try to capture it and as much of a realistic sense. And a lot of these are things that I agree with. So sometimes it'll be like, uh, this is wrong. I agree. It's been fixed. We can basically paint it green and it's done. Um, okay. I guess just as a, and I would love to hear from other commissioners, um, just as a process thing, it's hard for me to, I think, look at this in a, in a meeting, um, especially given that it's 730. So I wonder, can we just, um, can we have the commission commit to looking through this at a certain time? I mean, obviously we have to go through some of these items and respond to them, but it sounds like we can put it on the website with some preface that says the planning commission has not responded to it, but I would like to look at it before it goes on the website and maybe other commissioners do too. So can we leave it to like, you know, can you put it in comments to you by Friday? Brian, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to talk over you. I just was wondering yeah. if we could put it in the in the drive that we all yeah. have access oh. to, or something like that, like so we could all collaborate on it without it going. You know, it's not a live document quite yet. Yeah, we can. I'll I'll find a spot on the drive, and we can put it there for now. And then when when we have a portion of it that there are there is there are replies to it then maybe that's when we put that on the, I'll cut out a piece and put that on the website. Cause if you guys have responded to it and we know, you know, we agree, we agree, we disagree, um, make this change, then we can get these up there. And Okay. That sounds good. I mean, can we just say, um, I'm just proposing this, that by the end of Friday, 
if if you can get it into the drive tomorrow, say by the end of Friday, we could put it. We could put it Monday. I mean, if people want to work okay. on something over the weekend or something like that, okay. I, I know everyone's busy during the week. Um, so by people the have close of business next Monday, we will have looked at all the ones that have responses, just to make sure that we're all. Um, you know, fine with those going up on the website and then we can put those ones up on the website and we'll just keep chipping away at the at the ones that we haven't reviewed yet. What do other people think? I think I think it's great, Ariane. I would just say, you know, when I think about the the zoning changes, you know, and how many line items there would be and how we went through that process, I mean, Generally, we would take a look at the staff comments and and the things that we what might describe like we there were a few things that we wanted to talk about right and we would bring that language up and we would talk about it but for the most part we we just you know in mass adopted most of those things right it was just the things that we were not clear on or needed policy decisions that we would spend more time on right so I was thinking I mean we could. Yeah, we can spend more time on, or we can go through the ones that don't have responses yet. I just, I just want to look over the ones that have responses before they're posted on the website. Good. How does, no. is, does there have to be, do we need to take a vote before our commission recommendations go forward or go public? Or um, we'll probably, we should. We could probably, and we can add it to the end of the next meeting um, as after the public input session, we can just go through and, and if everybody's taking a look at it, we can go and um, vote on whether we put it online. Um, okay. Okay. That sounds good. I mean, I don't, I think this format is, is good and we've used it for the zoning. I think it works. Yeah. yeah but like you said, the, the toughest part is just getting through the, the mass of it. It's just so massive when you get 200, 300, 400 lines of comments, we can't sit in the planning commission and go and say, what do you think about this one? What do you think about this? One? <laughs> Cause we'll be here for months. Um, but if that's what it takes, we would. But I think in a lot of cases, we can go through and say, um, yeah, somebody made a comment, planning commission agreed, or a staff planner agreed to make the change, we made the change. And blunk, 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 blunk. Or staff says, um, we recommend this for this reason. And everyone's like, yeah, I mean, I, we get why they, they want that comment, but the reality is state law says you can't or something like that. Um, so there's no reason debating something that you can't do. Brian, what were you going to say? No, I just said thanks, Mike, for putting that together. Oh. I, I mean, that, that was, I know that's something you, that the chair and the vice chair requested, but that's a good snapshot of, big snapshot of everything. That's yeah, and you guys already have a, have a copy of it. I did email it to you this afternoon. So um, it is in your emails. So uh, I guess that brings us up to the, minutes oh, um so uh we have minutes for let's see what are the dates uh may 28th june 3rd june 10th okay so if we all want to just take a minute and look at them and then if anyone wants to move approval Oh, yeah. I did have one. Well, there's um changing Nikki Sabato's name. Yep. Um, and I know Peter mentioned that in one, you know, minutes of the public input session, there was not any rec record of the public comments, whereas in the other there was a note made <clears throat> about a comment about emergency housing. So I wonder if we should just strike the the uh, one that has the comment about the public housing just to be consistent. And so 
all of our public input goes into the matrix and is not reflected in the minutes just as a consistency thing. So I would suggest those two changes. Um, and that- And I'm sorry, Ariane, what, Peter. Which, which set of minutes is that on? Yeah, good, good point. Um, let's see. So June 3rd does say, Rick DeAngelis asked about the lack of emergency housing guidance. So I guess I'm suggesting because there weren't specific comments in the other in attributed to anyone else in the two public input sessions, that we just remove that line um, and just overall use the matrix for specific comments. Does that make sense? Yeah, I don't I think, think it's I don't think it's bad to put the names of people who provide input. We don't have to talk about what they said. Public input was provided by one, two, and three. And, and that was, you said, June. I'm trying to look. I usually have notes in some of mine for who was present for some of these. But oh, I didn't have as many notes because I was giving the presentation. Uh, oh, but it does have public, Rick DeAngelis, Doug Zorzi. And there was a okay, space, there was a Zorzi. woman that showed up later. Doug okay. Zorzi was there at that meeting. Okay. And then there was yeah. the woman who showed up later. I don't remember who she was. We were yeah. already in breakout groups. Right, Catherine Burgess. Um, but it doesn't, did, let's see. It was up under who is present at the meeting. Oh, oh. It had okay. those three names, but I could add those names at the bottom as well to go through and say input provided by Rick DeAngelis, Doug Zorzi, and Catherine Burgess, because they all provided input, but okay. we don't have to necessarily get into detail of what specifically was, was the okay. input. That seems fine. All right, so that is on that one. I had in my notes, Peter's still here, Peter is still here. I had in my notes, Peter put in comments under general business on the 28th, but it says there was no comments in the minutes. My notes said Peter had questions about CBRPC, so I think. Oh, okay. So we should make that change as well. So does anyone want to move approval of those three minutes with the, I think there are three changes that Mike is making. Is that right, Mike? Or noting? Yeah. So I have Peter Kelman for the general business, uh, fixing Nikki Sabado's name. And then on June 3rd, I have adding Catherine Burgess as being present and then amending the regroup to hear comments and thoughts from people to reflect that Rick, DeAngelis, Doug, and Catherine all provided comments. And I don't have any changes from June 10th so far. We would approve the three sets of minutes with the changes just discussed. I'll second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, then it's passed. All right, so do I have a motion to adjourn? You do. A second. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.
All right. Thank you, everyone. So I'll see um, hopefully all of you or most of you at the public input on Zoom on July 8th. Thank you, Ariane. Thank you, everyone.